Yes, what they are coming up with. First of all, we have Dan O'Reardon from Clondrohead, who, as we can see, has the flan yeah. filled and complete at this stage. Next to him, we have the Clonakilty representative, Patrick Murphy, who is putting the finishing touches to his flan. Now on we go to the Grenier representative Michael Holland and Michael is as well putting the finishing touches to his flan having already prepared his apple tart. Here we see the end result of the Morton Abbey um, product to that of Noel Cronin, uh, the finished uh, flan and the apple tart ready to bake. And finally in this section is the exhibit of the Ladies Bridge competitor Joe Bozang. Joe um, cleaning away after preparing his flan and preparing his apple tart ready to bake. So I'm sure that you'll agree with me that this is a most interesting departure for the gentlemen in Mocklin de Ferma and we can see many a redundant housewife in the years to come. Management as we see the last team, the Clonakilty team, uh, completing our, their tasks. We see Donald Santry here in front of us, the Clonakilty men, uh, reversing the New Holland and the silage trailer through the course while his two uh, colleagues, Tim Joe Collins and Sean Welton, um, are busy at other points in the arena doing the other uh, method of management tasks. Now we are here watching Tim Joe Collins, the other Clannacilty competitor, having just completed putting on the loader onto the, the tractor. And of course, as we saw earlier today, the next task he will undertake is that of uh, removing the bales from the trailer and uh, building a pyramid with those same bales. You have only 10 minutes to go now. The 10 minutes are gone. That's the bash they're coming from. The timekeeper 10 minutes are gone. Here is a result coming up, ladies and gentlemen. The result of the carpentry test. One that is going full belt there from 5 past 11 until half past 2. Making a dark channel. And it is around there for two and a half hours or so. Now we see Tim Joe Collins removing the first of the round bales from the trailer. The first of course which will be the base of his pyramid the pyramid of six bales and of course his task as well will be to put one of those bales into the calf trough Tony Kilty who are the last of the teams competing here in today's method of management are in the showgrounds for the eighth time in the club's history the club which was formed back in 1948. Now here we see Sean Welton, the Clannacilty representative, adjusting the plough into a position suitable for ploughing. The task which is a little bit more difficult than one would think at first glance. Now we're wondering if Tim Joe has a problem there, stacking the bales, because um, He's come back running up here. He was on board the tractor there, stacking those huge bales into a pyramid, and he's called Donald down to him below there. Only two bales stacked, and time is moving on. Don't forget that we have, have to have all six bales stacked one on top of the other there. And after all that, they've got to be removed and replaced in their original position. Now joining me here in the showgrounds is another of today's winners, the Clannacilty PRO, Sheila Lane. Sheila who scored a whopping 98 marks out of 100 in the dog hair competition. First of all, Sheila, congratulations and tell me, how much training did yourself and the fabulous black dog here have to do over the past number of weeks? Um, thanks Michael. Well, a lot of training. There's classes twice a week and um, training then um, a 10 minute every morning at lunchtime and in the evening. And tell me, first of all, is the dog your own? Yeah, he's my own. Yeah. He's five years old. 
But Anna, are you interested in dogs as a hobby or did this uh, no. competition make you actually take an instant like to dogs or? I've always been interested in dogs. I have another couple of dogs at home. And uh, obviously you being an expert on dogs, can you tell us uh, what uh, we should be doing to take better care of our dogs? Well, plenty of grooming and um, I think the dog actually being reinforced a bit more. So Sheila Lane, Clinical TPRO, winner of the dog care competition, thank you very much. Now, during the day we, ha we have been mentioning about the problems that clubs can encounter in um, doing this method of management competition and the Clannock Hilti team have had a number of problems in trying to get this loader to actually work and it has given them Now we see Tim Joe Collins, the Tony Kilty competitor, uh, back in action again after the mishap with the, the loader. Uh, he still has three more bales after this one to um, stack to complete his pyramid. And obviously the delay that he suffered a few minutes ago has um, created considerable delays for the team with obviously only 30 minutes to complete the six, the six tasks. Um, So he now places the fourth bale on the pyramid. Obviously, skill and care are required from here on in because one wrong move and the whole thing will collapse. Now we see Tim Shaw placing the last of the bales on the pyramid and this one could prove quite tricky because w one wrong jerk with the loader and the whole thing could collapse. So it's vital now that he reverses away from that pyramid He's actually managed to get away from it and he must now remove it, the top bale from the pyramid and place it in the water trough which is here to the left hand side of the pyramid. In fact, no, Tim Joe has decided that he will not place that particular round bale in the water trough, that in fact he will attempt to put them all back onto the trailer. Now the results of the flower arranging competition have been just have just been announced and uh, beside me here I've got a, a rather elated Joan Roach from the Shandoon Club Grinna. Joan has just been declared the winner in a competition which was very very close. First of all Joan congratulations and how much uh, preparation did you have to undergo to do this magnificent exhibit here in front of us? Well, a lot of hard work I got um, a lot of help from um, 
quite a number of people and uh, it was all due to them really. Um, I didn't know, I had a, um, a little knowledge about um, flower arranging before we got through to the show and um, I got a lot of help since then and I'm glad that I was able to put it all into um, action today. And do you think that you will take up flower arranging in future after today's uh, magnificent performance? Um, well, I love flowers so I think I'd, I'll keep it on, yeah. And obviously your result now means that uh, Grinna are well on the way to uh, possibly capturing the efficiency title. Have you anything to say on that? I don't know any, I don't know, I haven't met anybody since I'm in here so I don't know. Um, I believe we've had a second and that the lads are doing quite well in the management so um, we're hopeful. Well certainly your performance will be one of the ones to cherish in the future and again congratulations. Oh, I'm back indoors in the tent and in front of me is the Kukri exhibit of um, the man standing beside me here, Patrick Murphy from Clannacilty. First of all, I let, uh, I'll say congratulations to Patrick and I'll let him tell you exactly what he had to do. Well, just had to start and um, prepare the apple tart, the pa the firstly the pastry and then to put in the apples, sugar or whatever and to decorate a flan base. The flan or the base could be made beforehand and just decorate the base. What I've done is put roasted almonds around the edge and they're just the biscuits mixed with cream as a base for the strawberries and just two rings of cream around and that's about it and as you can see an apple on top of the, the apple tart. Surely Patrick when you heard uh, a few months back that Markland and Fermer were organising a competition which involved gins cookery you must have said oh no uh, did you were you a, a reluctant participant or did you jump to the opportunity? I won't say I jumped to the opportunity, I, or I wasn't reluctant either as, as such, but there's one competition I want, would like to have competed in Cork Show, and there's one competition that I could easily find time to do, whereas other competitions I wouldn't have had the time to, to train or to practice at it, whereas this competition you could practice at night, anytime, and it suited that way, and it's also interesting in working with it. Do you think it's important for the modern man to be well versed in the uh, traits of cookery and whatnot? I suppose it's handy, I might be able to make an apple tart now and again, but not for a while, I think I'll give it a break for the moment. Well, certainly your performance here today means that whatever lady takes your fancy in the future, she'll have a rather easy life. Again, congratulations and the best wishes to your club for the rest of the day. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for the final of the make and model section, the modelling part. Okay, and if I could call Catherine Kelleher from Clondrahood branch first. <laughs> Catherine is wearing a sky blue skirt made of self patterned cotton. Over this, she wears a floral patterned, loose fitting blouse with short sleeves. To complement this outfit, Catherine has chosen a deep, loose fitting belt and fashionable white shoes and white earrings. Thank you, Catherine. Next, we call Frances O'Sullivan from Ladies Bridge Branch. Frances is modeling a light, casual outfit, perfect for the show, in a striking cotton material. The jacket has extended shoulders and a notched collar. It has two patch pockets and it looks well worn over this light two-piece. The blouse in a delicate patterned blue giving a striking effect with the skirt. It has padded shoulders which give a definite line to the garment with half sleeves. The skirt in a matching material has four pleats which is its main feature. The accessories give the overall look with the white bag and shoes. They finish off this outfit perfectly. The cost of the outfit is 25.69. Thank you Francis. Now, if we could have Julie O'Mahony from Mornabby Branch representing Avondhu. Julie 
is wearing a multicolored lined dress above ankle length. The dress has extended padded shoulders with a dropped waist and white belt and buttoned to the back. To complement the outfit, Julie has made a white loose fitted linen jacket with patch pockets. She wears gold jewellery and accessories in her hair. Thank you, Julie. Now we have Breda Holland from Granamark and Firma. Breda has chosen for her casual outfit a very versatile skirt and jacket and contrasting blouse. The white jacket, made up in a creased cotton, has a notched collar, long set in sleeves with shoulder pads. The matching white skirt, also of creased cotton, has unpressed pleats to the back. It has a button opening to the left in contrasting green and a side seam pocket. To contrast this, she has chosen a green blouse with a self vice bound neckline, has front tucks, button clothing to the back and extended shoulders. To complement this outfit, she has accessorized with matching green belt and shoes. Thank you, Breda. Now, from Clannacilty, Makra, we have Teresa Duggan. <laughs> Teresa is wearing a smart navy and white outfit. The navy pinafore has a pleated wrap-over skirt at above ankle length. The top with the extended padded shoulders is pleated into inset waistband, features center back pleat and front welt pockets with flaps. This is worn over a white crepe de chine loose fitting blouse with collar and single layer lapels and elbow length sleeves. Teresa complements this outfit with white casual shoes and a white cotton cap. Thank you, Teresa. Now, if we could have all five girls up again for a walk. Floundrahead, <laughs> Ladies Bridge, <laughs> Moore Abbey, Grana, and Clannacilty. Now, if you could give them all a hearty round of applause. As you, the method and management results uh, have just been announced. The method and management, uh, which is of course the premier uh, task here at the efficiency finals, Clannacilty have just been declared the winners, and I'm joined now by the three members of the team: uh, Tim Joe Collins, Sean Welton, and Donald Santry. Tim Joe Collins, um, first of all, congratulations, and I'm sure that Clannacilty must be thrilled to bits to win this. Yeah, I indeed, it is a, a great achievement. It's something that I've been. We'll say trying for it's my second occasion competing here and um, I'm only too happy to be declared a winner here today. Sean, um, how much effort and uh, preparation did the team undergo over the past number of weeks? Well, with the last part we've been at it nearly every night, constant, but now and again we've worked on our own and so we've put in the effort, but it's been worth it. 
uh, Sean or Donal, uh, obviously if you're uh, involved in farming full time, uh, it gives you a great um, help in doing these competitions to do today. I noticed that uh, in the methylene management, at one stage the Clannacilty team were under tremendous pressure in the sense that some of the machines and etc. didn't work for them uh, or work for you as you would have liked. Um, you were cool, calm and collective. What would you achieve with that to? Practice is a lot to do with it, I think. Like, uh, we had our job to do and we went out and we did it. And we all went well accordingly anyway. So again, Conor Kilty, congratulations and the best of luck with the, the final results of the overall competition will be announced in a minute. And the best of luck to you. Now, uh, obviously, this hour of the evening, the results are coming in thick and fast, and another result has just been announced, and that's the make and model. And the winners of the 1987 make and model competition are Morden Navy. And beside me here, I have Julio Manny, the club hero, who was the Morden Navy representative on the, on the make and model. First of all, Julie, congratulations. And secondly, how much effort went into making this fabulous outfit you have? Oh, a fair bit of effort went into it, all right. Um, it was all lined, and um, both the jacket and um, the dress, and um, <laughs> I had to kind of start at scratch, but um, we were, I managed it. Have you taken part in similar competitions before? No, it was my first competition of the sort. Are you fashion conscious? A little bit, but I'll never be seen on a ramp again, ever. <laughs> Why? Uh, I was a bit nervous. <laughs> And how do you expect that your club will do overall today? I think they do. They'll do relatively okay. I say that everybody put a good lot of work into it, and oh well, we enjoyed the day anyway. <laughs> and anyway, you're happy because you've won the make and model again. Congratulations and thank you very much. They may have won the rolling of the bales, but they didn't win the. Right, well the results of the 1987 efficiency final have just been announced and the happy group that you see here in front of us are the Carberry representatives, Clannacilty, who have uh, defeated the clubs from the four other regions in the county today in the 1987 AIB sponsored efficiency final. It's Clannacilty's eighth time being in the final and uh, it's their uh, second time winning the competition. Now I think it's appropriate that we have a word with the chairman of the winning club, Jerry Duggan. First of all, Jerry, congratulations. How are you feeling? Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, very tired, but very excited. The adrenaline is, the adrenaline is, is flowing fairly hard, but we're, we're, we're delighted really with our success here today. Are the clubs surprised at our victory? Well, <coughs> each and every team member has put an awful lot of work into it over the past number of weeks. And um, even if we didn't win here today, we have something to show for participation in the competitions. And winning is an extra bonus, but you know it's, it's tremendous the, the, the feeling in the club really, it's tremendous. There's, there's a great feeling of unity uh, amongst us at the moment. And what do you attribute today's victory to? Uh, I would put it down to, to, to hard work by the team members. Also I'd like to pay tribute to the team manager, Dwayne McCarthy, he did an awful lot of work for us. And also an awful lot of people who may, mightn't be uh, seen here, uh, namely the coaches. Uh, each and every person has, has, has had some coach and um, I think there's great credit due to them also for actually training them in the individual uh, competitions that they were concerned with and uh, I'd like to express my appreciation uh, to the coaches uh, also for that. Well of course the um, big prize is £1,000, what is the club going to do with the £1,000? Indeed. <coughs> I think the norm is that it's, it's used to finance uh, a tour abroad so I, I'm sure we'll probably go along the same lines this year anyway you know. Well, of course, you certainly deserve uh, a holiday after today's fantastic victory. So, Jerry Duggan, Chairman of Clannock Hilton Market, thank you very much and the best of luck. Much. Thank you. Well, finally, as things uh, are concluded here at the Cork Showgrounds, I'm joined by two of the top officials in Market and Firma. On my right is Padraig Welch, who is the newly the new president of the organisation and who is on his first official visit to Cork. And on my left is Richard Hinchin, uh, the county president here in Cork and also the Munster vice president. First of all, if I can turn to Padraig Welch. Padraig, first of all, welcome to Cork. And uh, what was your impression of today's efficiency final? Thanks very much for the welcome, Michael. Uh, as there's no doubt that uh, the, there was a hive of activity around the arena today and it was great to see so many people getting a taste of uh, 
some of the better points of mockery competitions where people learn skills or crafts that will stand to them at some day in the future, even though the competitors mightn't be aware of that today. It was probably a burden on some of them or a hard task for some of them to uh, prepare for today's task, but I'm sure that they'll look back in years to come and say that the, only for the efficiency in Cork show they might never have been able to do that particular task. Podrick, you've just taken over what will be a two-year term as president of the organisation uh, at, uh, at a time really when the organisation is going through a period of great change. What would you say would be your major uh, role or your major wish uh, over the next two years? I'd like to see a very vibrant organisation throughout the country, but there's one thing in particular, that uh, one area in particular, and that is uh, the number of young farmers in the organisation has dropped, I think, over the past number of years, and I'd like to see that increased. And as I said earlier when I was talking to Peter Murphy, I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression from that. There's nothing wrong with having non-farming people in Makra. They're very welcome and they add greatly to the organisation. But the, the unfortunate point about it is that, that many of the young farmers that are not in Makra are not involved in any organisation. And I think it's essential that we as an organisation uh, can do something for those people and we must do our best to recruit them and get them involved in the organisation. The allegation has been made, Podrick, that people are coming into the organisation at a very young age and leaving within a very, very short time, having achieved very little. What uh, message would you give to clubs who are trying to recruit uh, new members at the moment as to how they can keep uh, or hang on to people for longer than what seems to be the, the, the term at the moment? Well, I haven't any golden solution to a problem which has, as you say, become very apparent throughout the country. But I do honestly think that if young far there are young farmers in every community, and if young farmers are got into the organisation, they tend to stay longer in the organisation. This has been proved over the years. You get the young farmer in, he tends to stay longer, and uh, is, shall we say, roots for the club to keep it going. And I think uh, every member in the organisation can benefit as a result of that. Um, there's a tendency for uh, people to move on, their, their job moves, or their maybe they're unemployed and they have to leave the area. There's 101 reasons why people leave the organisation so quickly. But I think if we can attract a young farmer and do something for them, and uh, everybody in the organisation will benefit as a result. Richard Hinchin, if I can turn to you for a few minutes. Uh, first of all, what's your impression of today's uh, county efficiency final? Thank you, Michael. I must say, first of all, I'm very impressed by today's efficiency. We have a number of firsts. Today is the first time that the show has been on a Sunday. Therefore, it's the first time that the mocker efficiency has been on a Sunday. Uh, being the Eucharistic procession, we have been blessed with finding weather, and I'm glad to see that the rain has held up for the few hours. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the competitors, because after all, today's efficiency is our shop windows gives us an opportunity of bridging the gap that can exist between urban and rural and by, by and all a very enjoyable day was had by everybody who attended uh, today's 1987 summer show in Cork. What would you say are the main benefits to be derived from the likes of the competitions that were held here today which obviously are a major drawing card uh, judging by the number of spectators who are around this particular arena today? I think first of all take it from the point of view of the competitors it gives them an opportunity of showing some of the skills that they already have and improve upon them. Maybe for some of the competitors here today, it was their first opportunity competing at this level. So they had to do an awful lot of groundwork uh, to um, produce the high standards that they did here today. So it gave them an opportunity of acquiring new skills, whether it be in the dog care, in cooking. We had an excellent cooking competition, so we are domesticating a lot of some of our male members in the organisation. So these are just some of the skills that were required by the competitors here today. Now, turning away to things in general, uh, over the past four days, Mark and the firm has had a big involvement in the organisation of Cork Show in general. Um, are you, first of all, satisfied with the way that things have been organised and maybe perhaps uh, what changes for next year would you like to see? Yes. <coughs> first of all, this is our second year that MOCRA has participated in stewarding of the gates in conjunction with the Munster Agricultural Show. Uh, an excellent job was done by all of the MOCRA stewards. Our new major attraction at uh, the 1987 summer show was the, the food village and this has, uh, the food and beverage exhibition and this has been a major crowd puller in the past four days. I think in reality, looking at the show, I think we'll have to seriously look at bringing it back to maybe three days. It was by accident. It happened as a four-day show with the church hall. I think next year uh, we will be looking at it closely, bring it back to maybe three days and uh, bulk it more.
So I think generally the message from the day is success all round, success in the show and success in the efficiency finals where Clannacilty were declared the winners from us all here at the showgrounds. A very good night.